My name is Nathaniel Dodson, and in this Photoshop tutorial today, we're going to do this city in a cup photo manipulation digital artwork. It's inspired by something really cool I saw on Behance uh, from an artist, I believe I pronounce his name, Abbas Mia. I will link his Behance article in the description. I think he actually did a tutorial on it as well, but I'm, I'm, I promise you, I did not watch the tutorial. This is all the way that I would have done it and figured it out. Um, so hopefully my tutorial turns out better than his and our artwork turns out better than his. Um, although go show him some serious appreciation because it's a cool idea um, and we're just hijacking the idea and making it better and uh, trying to figure out a way to share it with all you guys. So let's jump into Photoshop right now and get started. Okay, so this whole tutorial begins here in my finder because we need some files. We need to mix files together to create this photo manipulation. Now these are all from unsplash.com. What does that mean? Well, it means as long as they're up on unsplash.com, you can go download all the photos in this tutorial for free and I'm gonna have them all linked in the description below. Shot of Chicago, beautiful city. Shot of these ominous birds flying above a tree. The latte, some hot air balloons, uh, an airplane. So all these things you're going to want to go download. We're going to kick off the whole tutorial with our latte shot here. We're going to right click. Well, I'm going to move it over so you can see it. I'm going to right click and just choose to open it up in Photoshop, the newest version of Photoshop. And um, the whole thing is going to begin by, well, first off, getting rid of this logo on the side of the cup. How do we do that? Well, there are a lot of ways you can do it. We're just going to grab our lasso tool here. I don't necessarily need any feathering and I'm going to zip a selection right around it. And we're going to go ahead and choose edit content aware fill for the new content aware fill in Photoshop. And uh, you can see there's a preview of what's happening over there. Looks pretty good. Uh, good enough for me. I'm just going to hit OK. I'm not even going to change anything. And then Command or Control D to deselect. See, it's given us a new layer with this patch on it. I don't really need a new layer. We can go full destructive editing. So let's just hit Command or Control E to merge those together. Then I'm going to zoom in. And there are some little, you know, some little gritty grimies here. And I am going to take maybe the spot healing brush and just say, you know, get, get you out of there. And then get this little spot guy out of here. Maybe this guy down here. Get rid of him and this. Uh, the spot ah, the spot healing brush is always disappointing. Let's go with the regular healing brush. Hold down alter option and just sample and paint over it and just look at how much better. Look at how much better a job that does. It doesn't leave these big soft funky looking marks. Just matches up the texture nicely. Uh, maybe we'll get rid of this little spot here on the, the handle as well. Uh, so something like that is fine. Just cleaning up the mug uh, and then begins the process of extracting the mug. It is kind of cool. We could do this and leave the background behind it and you can have the city growing out of a mug very much in context and that's totally cool but I think it looks better uh, when we isolate it on its own background so let's try this here with the quick selection tool and uh, let's go ahead and paint 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 all around the cup get the latte get the brim of the mug and you don't want to just click and keep holding sort of let Photoshop make the selection and then go in and refine it that way, if you mess up the selection, like right now, if I mess up this part of the selection, I can undo and still have the bulk of my selection still there. And it will look, it'll look great. The back of the, the mug, we don't really need to be too, too concerned about because after all, the city is going to be covering it up. Um, but eh, I'm picky, so I think I'll still spend some time with it. And then you can be as uh, fine or not with this part of the process as uh, you like. One thing I think I'm going to do is just try to clean up the front of the mug a little bit. And probably the fastest way to do this, and it's just a way I love selecting stuff in general when you're doing it for uh, these type of photo manipulations, use your polygonal lasso tool and give it a little feather. So I'm just giving it two pixels of feather. And then you would zoom in and hold down your shift key. So you're adding to the selection and just come through. I mean, a, a curve is just a bunch of really short, straight lines. So you can just come through this curve and just really, you know, ah, just flatten out, clean up the edge a little bit, make it a little not as nasty as it is. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And by the way, we are going to reconstruct this shadow because I know you're thinking, what about that shadow? And we're going to take care of that here. I am going to just cinch that right off. Boom. All right, looks good. So now we're going to not copy this to a new layer. We're just going to slap a mask on this by hitting the new mask icon. And there's our cup. Looks kind of bad because there's all these brown edges. We're going to take care of that. I want to leave those brown edges because they're going to serve uh, as a sort of shadow maker, if you will, later on. Um, so let's go ahead and move this to a new document. So this is going to be actual document of our um, of our manipulations. So let's go file new and I'm going to go pretty big here. So just uh, if your computer can't handle a document this big, um, just go with something smaller, but just know you're going to have to adjust your sizing and things like that. We're going to go 6,000 by, let's just go 6,000 by 6,000. So it's pretty big, 
but big can be nice. So we're going to drag this latte coffee mug. I don't know. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink lattes. Uh, and I know maybe that sounds crazy to a lot of you, uh, but I know it's something like that where they do a little cream artwork stuff to it. Uh, all right, we can we can probably leave the white background for a moment. I'm gonna shift click the mask on the latte layer and we, we can see our shadow. We wanna copy that shadow real quick. So uh, we're gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna do it above our little coffee mug. I'm gonna call it shadow. And then obviously we'll drag it beneath the mug when we have our shadow created. So we'll go elliptical marquee and just drag out, eh, you know, a circle, an ellipse, something like that. And we're gonna fill it with black, edit, fill, or we can just hit the letter D to set our back our foreground color to black and option delete, alt backspace on the PC and then command or control D to deselect. And then we'll go filter, blur. We're gonna kick this off with a Gaussian blur. Probably like 30, okay, 100 extra looks pretty good. I was thinking 35 pixels, but remember this is a 6,000 by 6,000 document. So blurs and things like that are gonna have to go higher. Uh, 100 pixels looks great. And then I'm gonna go filter and uh, my go-to blur for really topping off any kind of shadow is the motion blur. It's just what it does to shadows is just magical. It really gives it a very shadow-like quality. And uh, something like eh, negative 22, you know, 22.5, 20, negative 25 maybe, just to kind of give us the same, eh, you know, if anything, I'll go negative 20. Uh, something like that, hit OK. And you can see our shadow right there. So then I'll move it over so it's kind of filling out the area that the original shadow was. It's really hard to tell what's going on with the shadow because A, it's on top of the coffee mug, and B, we're distracted by the old shadow. So what we'll do is we'll shift click the coffee mug to make the old shadow go away first and foremost, and we'll drag the new shadow underneath, and then I'll just drag this over until it kind of looks like it should. Let me just double check against the original image. Yeah, maybe I'll push it out a little further. But I think something like that, right? That's pretty close. Something like that will probably work for us. Maybe I'll nudge it down just a, a hair. All right, so we've got the mug. We've got our shadow. If I shut off the, the white background, it looks even better, right? And we are going to be getting rid of the background because we're going to build a, a fresh background. In fact, let's click the lock icon and just delete the background too because we're going to be creating a new background for this here in a moment. And actually, that moment can be right now. So let's go new gradient fill layer. So let's go gradient. And uh, in the gradient fill dialog, we're going to create a new gradient here. Um, so I'm going to just take, I don't know, any random gradient that I have. The point is I want my dark handle here to be a saturation of zero, number one, because we want it to be a gray and a brightness value of 95. Well, actually let's make the brightness value 75 here and then hit okay. And over here, this is going to be the lighter color. So again, saturation goes to zero and the brightness value here will be 95 and we'll hit okay and okay. And I'm going to make this a radial gradient. Now, what we're getting is the light on the outside and the dark on the inside. I don't want that, so I'm gonna go reverse. Now we have the light on the inside and the dark on the outside. And I can just simply drag the gradient wherever I want it to be. So I know I kinda want the brightness to be over here with the gradient, so I'll do that. And I want there to be less gray, so we're just gonna scale the gradient up. Give me more light stuff. Make the gradient bigger and bigger and bigger. Ooh, that's way too much, hold on. It didn't quite update as quickly as I expected it would. Let's bring this back to maybe 120, 250. Yeah, somewhere around 200 is going to give us kind of what we want, where we're just getting that nice shadowing around maybe like two sides of our square and not quite as much up here in the top right corner. All right, hit OK. There's our background. Of course, we put it on top of the shadow, so that's no good. Um, now, a regular gradient background is just a computer digitally generated piece of artwork. There's actually a little bit of banding in there that's probably coming through really strongly uh, in the in the tutorial. So let's try just converting our image to a 16-bit image. That can sometimes help in terms of getting rid of some of that banding. Um, in fact, I'm going to I'm going to try just reapplying the gradient fill altogether. So I'm going to save my gradient here. I'm just going to call this gradient gray and hit new. This is this is tutorial on the fly right here. Let's delete that layer. Let's go new gradient fill again. And we're going to now select our pre-made gradient to save us a little time. I'm going to zoom out a little. And we'll go through the same thing here. We know we need to reverse it. We know we need to set it to radial. We know we need to drag the light point over here and the scale of about, what was it, 220, something like that will work for us. Hit OK. Uh, and that's a little bit better. Uh, but uh, another way to help combat the banding is not only to work in a 16-bit image, but also, I'll we'll drag this below the shadow again, create a grain layer. So uh, we're gonna add some grain to this. A few different ways we can do this, uh, but what I'm gonna do is simply right-click on the layer and choose to convert it to a smart object, and then we can go filter, camera raw filter, 
and we can add grain here in the camera raw dialog box when it decides to pop up for us. There we go. Let me make it a little bit smaller here so we can all see what's going on. And I'm going to hit the FX tab and I'll just choose to include some grain. Now I'm going to zoom way in on the background because I really want to see what this looks like. I want the grain to be bigger and sort of crunchier. Um, so we're going to go bigger with the grain and then just reduce the amount. We're just looking to introduce abnormality, right? We, we're never going to see a perfectly smooth gradient in real life. There's always going to be slight color variation and difference. And that's all that grain is doing. It's just giving it that texture, that feel of something that is way more real. All right. Now we need to select the latte part of the top of our mug. We can try a few different ways of doing this. Uh, we could try hand painting it in. Let's just see what happens if we use the quick select tool first. I've got the, I'm on the latte layer here. Let's go for that and just see what that looks like. Um, that's actually not bad. Uh, what I'm going to do, I don't want to knock this out of the mug yet. I want to simply save this selection because we're going to use this in a few different areas, but we also want to see exactly what it looks like and how much of the mug is staying or going. So let's sort of preserve this selection in a hacky way by adding a hue saturation adjustment layer. So I just clicked on the half black, half white circle, go hue saturation, and uh, I don't know, let's just radically change the color of the latte. Maybe crank up the saturation and maybe we'll make it, yeah, like pink. Pink is going to be very easy to see. And now we can see, yeah, there's a little bit of the brown stuff around the edges, but I think it's a good enough selection for us. Um, if anything, we could select the mask, go into the properties panel and just feather the mask ever so slightly. Just give it a little blur on those edges, right? Maybe a little more blur than I'm thinking. Maybe something like that, about an eight pixel blur. It looks like it's going to do some good things for us there. I'll just help blend it together a little bit, give it a softer transition. All right, we can shut off the hue saturation now. We'll get back to that later. I do, however, want to select the cup layer, and I'm just going to name the layer cup as well. We want to add a vibrance adjustment layer, this guy right here. We're going to add this and clip it to the cup layer. We can do that by hitting this little clip layer icon and just reduce the saturation uh, of the cup quite a bit. We kind of want to get rid of virtually all the color in the cup. We don't want the, we don't want there to be that distracting brown edge, right? And at this point you can see there is still this brown fringy edge on the front. So how do we get rid of that? Well, there's a few ways you can do it, but kind of probably the fastest way would be to command or control click on the layer mask, select the layer mask, grab a selection tool like the elliptical marquee. And what this is going to allow you to do is use your arrow keys to nudge the selection and just nudge the selection back kind of until you would be getting rid of the bulk of that, that darker stuff that you don't like. And then grab the brush tool, a nice soft edge brush, set the opacity of the brush to 100. And then you're just going to paint with black. So we could just paint away, paint away some of that stuff. What we need to uh, make sure that we inverse our selection, inverse the selection. And then we can paint away whatever we think is just kind of sticking out like a sore thumb, right? There was just such a dark edge along the front there. And now there's this little tiny bit here that's sticking out that's going to be distracting. And I know it's going to bug me later on. So I'm going to go through and just flatten it out and just make it look right. Right now it just blends in with everything else. All right, something like that. And again, ignore the color of the latte because we're just desaturating the entire cup. And the next step is going to be to grab our Chicago photo here. I'm going to right click and just open this guy in Photoshop. And all we need to do here, well, the first thing I should say we need to do is select the sky and get rid of it. Hey, look, there's even a little airplane up there. I don't think we'll save it though. We can use our quick selection tool probably, uh, but sometimes the problem with quick selection tool is it gets most of the sky, but also the tops of a lot of the buildings. Like you can see here, we're getting a lot of stuff there. So what you would need to do at this point and what I usually do is again, I go back to my trusty poly lasso tool and just a feather of two or three. And I would just hold down shift and go through and select all these building tops and just go through it. You pause the video at this point and just go through and make all your selections as uh, as you see fit and just build out a nice selection of the skyline. And what you would do at this point is zoom in and go back to our trusty poly lasso tool. Actually, I, I always think about it in terms of I'm not selecting the sky, but I'm selecting the buildings. So I know I did select the sky, but I usually go select inverse because now when I zoom in, I can say, all right, I need to add the top of this building. So with my poly lasso tool, just a little two pixel feather, I can simply hold down shift and just add this building and go through and, you know, just clean up the skyline as you see fit adding, 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 and uh, getting rid of anything that needs to be gotten rid of. 
And once I've done that, I can try masking it. So let's hit the mask button and that knocks away the sky and things look okay. Now I did realize I just cut off the top antennas of the Hancock Tower because that's the one thing I didn't uh, touch there in the mask. So I'm actually going to undo that and I'll zoom back in here. And again, just poly lasso tool with two pixels of, of, of adjustment and we can just zip right through here and at least get the bulk of these antennas up here. I feel like they're a pretty prominent feature of the tower. So kind of important to make sure we include them. Something like, like that. I get kind of silent when I start focusing. So something like that's probably good for us. Uh, and then again, we'll hit that new mask icon and there we have it. Nice soft selection of it. Doesn't have to be perfect at all, but just good enough. And the very, very edges of the city out here, I don't think we're really gonna be using them. So I'm not super duper concerned about them. Now, at this point, because you spent all that time doing it, you may wanna save this image with the mask uh, just in case you need to come back to it. So Commander Control J to duplicate the layer. And then we want to right click on our layer mask and choose to apply the layer mask. That's going to sort of just cut all cut all the sky out of the image very destructively. Why are we doing this destructively? Well, because we really want to compress the skyline. So I want to move these buildings in a little bit closer because obviously the Hancock Tower here is going to be like the focal thing. We got the Willis Tower kind of peeking through back there uh, and we'll move some of these buildings in as well. So let's zoom in on this side, use our lasso tool again, and I'm just going to try to follow the edge of that building and the edges of other subsequent buildings. Right, So you don't want to just come through here and slash and burn. You want to really come through and make sure you're getting the edges of buildings so that when you pull all this together, it doesn't look like a complete disaster, but instead it looks uh, cohesive. So I don't need to worry about buildings way down here quite as much because uh, they're going to be covered by the coffee mug. So I want to undo that last one, hit the delete key to just go back uh, with one of your lasso strokes. And let's bring this over here this way to about the edge of this building. And then we'll loop out, up, and over. So you can see I'm just picking edges of buildings. It doesn't have to be any one in particular. I'm kind of just, you know, I know I want to get this little building with the spire and this bigger tower, and then we got like three sort of high rises next to that. So now here's where the damage sort of begins. We just grab our move tool and we move this. So we can move it right over. Now, one thing you could do to make it a little bit more non-destructive is go layer new, new layer via cut. So it's gonna pop that up onto its own layer. And then we can just shift it over. So I can say like, all right, the new edge of this building, whoops, let me uh, redo that. I could say, you know, the new edge of the spired building is going to be right here against this glassy edge. So I can move it right over just like that. And then I could look at some of the other buildings, right? Like this building does not look correct right there. So I can reduce the opacity, find the edge of the building underneath it. And again, just use the lasso tool here. Just come through with the lasso tool and just hit the delete key. Just get rid of it. Crank the opacity back up. Now it kind of looks like it tucks in a little bit better. And I think everything else kind of works for us. I don't know how much this building is really going to be in the shot. Maybe we should just check on it real quick. Um, well, you know, I think I think it's okay where it is. Uh, again, it's not perfect. Maybe just loop it up and around this little building here, just to kind of just to kind of tuck it in there. Whoop, wrong wrong layer. No, oh, no, it's the right it's the right layer. There's just nothing to go there. All right, so yeah, we'll just leave that like that. And then we repeat the process here. I'm just gonna speed it up. Repeat the process on the other side with some of these tall buildings and just kind of pinch this skyline together a little bit uh, and give us a little bit, uh, just a more compressed look at the skyline without actually distorting uh, the buildings using, you know, free transform or something like that. All right, and I think something like that is about what we want. We've just taken the Chicago skyline from, from that, and we've just compressed it in a bit. So this center chunk, obviously, is what we're going to use. So we can go ahead with our rectangular marquee tool and just select kind of from cut to cut right there. I think that works for us. And uh, we can, well, we probably want to just merge all this up to a new layer. So Command Shift Option E, that's Control Shift Alt E on the PC, and then hit Command or Control J to just cut out that center area. And now we are left with just this center cut of the compressed area of the skyline. So let's go ahead and drag this over into our composite here. And it's gonna say, look, our bit depth is different because we're working in the 16-bit image. And it's dragged the whole group over, so I must have selected the wrong layer, which I did. 
And we're going to go ahead and drag the image over. Same warning message. All right, and here we have it. And now what I'm going to do is just zoom in a little. We could artificially make the city bigger. I'm going to reduce the opacity a little just so we can kind of see the edges of the city and also the edges of the cup. And one of the things that I want to do right off the bat is kind of transform the city so it's almost leaning toward us a little bit more, right? The cup's kind of leaning toward us. The city's kind of leaning away from us. So let's go edit, transform, and I'm going to start with perspective, and I'm going to widen the top, and I'm going to pinch in the bottom, and then I'm going to right-click and choose scale, and I'm going to hold down my alter option key and, and my shift key, and I'm going to pull it side to side a little bit, kind of something like that. Um, and I may actually make it a little bit taller too. Maybe something kind of like that will work for us. Go ahead and commit that change. And now you can see we, we obviously need to do some work in terms of masking this in. Now, I would say it would be it would behoove you to kind of line up the edge of the latte with edges of buildings. So we're not like cutting this building in half. So what I might do is just nudge this over, right? Just so the edge of that building is right there at the edge of the latte. Now we know that we can do something like, all right, we're going to have this building come right out of here. It's going to shoot right up like that. Boom. I can hold down Alter Option and hit the new mask icon. That'll just cut that away with the mask. Now, obviously, we have issues down here where the latte is showing. That's fine. And then over here on the other side, we're going to kind of live with what, we, what we've got. And I am, by the way, cutting the edge of the city on a slight angle. I don't know if you're noticing that. I'm cutting it on a slight angle just because I kind of like that effect. I'm going to move here. I'm looking at the edge of this building. That's what I'm cutting alongside of. And again, with that layer mask selected, we're just going to fill this with black. Black is our foreground color. Option delete or alt backspace on the PC and you're good to go. All right, so we've got the buildings cut. The latte is not quite looking the way it should, but we're going to take care of this all in a second here. We're going to load that selection that we saved. Well, we can actually turn this layer opacity back up to 100. We're going to command or control click on this layer mask. Go back to our layer for the city of Chicago. Go to the layer mask. I'm sorry. So we have the layer mask selected. See the white tick marks around the mask. We'll zoom in and we have the inside part of this selected. So I'm going to grab my brush tool and I am going to paint with white because I want to reveal the city here and just make sure that the city is still showing all through here, right? That's first and foremost. All right, I'm going to come over here and do the same thing here. And we may look at this and realize it looks really bad if the, the buildings aren't cut like at the absolute furthest edge. We can, we can really do a lot here or we can make the edge even more organic if we like, which we may end up doing. Now what I'm going to do is go select inverse. So I'm selecting everything outside of that center latte area and I am going to erase that. So grab my brush tool and I'm going to set my foreground color to black at the little flippy flop arrows. Make my brush a little bit bigger using the square bracket keys and just paint all of this away. <clears throat> that is out here outside of the mask. Commander Control D to deselect. And we have our city starting to pop out of the mug, right? We're starting to build the illusion a little bit. See how we chop this building off? I kind of think, ooh, I kind of think I want to bring that over just a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use my brush. I'm going to right click. I'm going to increase the hardness to maybe like 75%. I'm going to paint with white. And this may be where I want to drag in the Wacom tablet and just turn it on here. And... Um, we may want to just kind of play with this a little bit and paint it and see what looks good. I might make my brush a little smaller and we'll just let this building kind of overlap a little bit, right? So we'll let that building come out and sort of hang out out here and be doing its, its building thing right about something like so. And this, of course, is where we come in with the poly lasso tool and we just cut the lines straight. Whoops, accidentally held down shift. We just cut our lines nice and straight. So I'm going to create that selection and then I'm going to inverse the selection. So I'm going to go select inverse and again use the brush tool and just gently go around this painting with black and just paint away anything that kind of shouldn't be there. Command or control D to deselect and we can see what that looks like. Eh, it's just a little thing kind of hanging out. I don't know. I don't really know if it adds anything or not to uh, what we're doing. What I may try to do over here is just take this wholesale and no matter where it ends up, uh, no matter where it ends up cutting off the city, let's just see what it looks like if we take it from the furthest point. I need to bump my feather up to maybe like five. Well, it's really eight on the edge of the cup, isn't it? So let's, ah, I'm going to stick with five. I'm going to select here and just go straight up, follow my path, bring this over, boom. And we need to fill this with white. So we're going to make white our foreground color, hit option, delete, alt, backspace, command or control D to deselect. 
And there we have that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't mind it either way. Kind of, it kind of is okay either way for me. Uh, but we'll just we'll stick with what we've got here. Maybe what we should do is get rid of these building tops sticking out up here. So let's just create this selection. This might just help to clean things up for us. Let's just get rid of all this stuff because it's almost like buildings with no base, if you will. Uh, so it's going to almost look like they're just hanging out in outer space. There we have it. And we're going to fill this uh, selection with black. Now, I may have made a mistake here by leaving my, yes, and I did, by leaving my uh, lasso tool at eight or five pixels, I'm sorry, or yeah, five pixels of feather. So let's just redo that real quick. Guys, I am, I'm a, have I ever told you I'm a professional? There we go. There we go. Just like that loop it right through and I messed it up again let's deselect that well you're gonna go watch me do it a third time here because because who doesn't want to watch a poly lasso being created three times in a row there we go all right we'll cinch that off with the layer mask selected on the Chicago layer fill it with black commander control D to deselect and I think that looks a lot better right it just doesn't look like there's stuff hanging out up there that shouldn't be there uh, all right so Let's uh, let's back out a little further. We can see what we've got. We got the little bit of park in the foreground looking kind of cool. And I think it's time to maybe brighten up the shot of Chicago and change a few things there. So let's add a curves adjustment first. Clip it to the layer beneath. We only want to affect Chicago. And I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit, maybe even lift the darker areas of the image. Something kind of like that is cool. Then I'm going to add another curves adjustment. I'm going to clip this as well, and I'm going to convert this to the layer blend mode of multiply. I'm going to fill the layer mask here with black by just going image adjustments and invert. The hotkey is command or control I, which is usually what I would uh, click. That's just going to flip your white mask to a black mask. Command or control I, super helpful hotkey. All right, now in here, we're going to create uh, shadowy bits. So I'm going to take my brush tool. I'm going to right click. I'm going to make it very, very soft. I'm going to make it very large, very large, something like that, around four. Maybe we'll go 400 even on the size. And I'm going to reduce the opacity of my brush tool to like 10, 15, 20%. And I'm going to paint with white. And then I'm just going to come around through here in the foreground of these buildings and just shadow them up a little bit, right? Just make it darker. They should sort of, you know, especially the stuff down here in the front, because it should kind of be, you know, beneath the lip of the mug, so to speak. So we just want to darken that stuff up and, and just make it look like it belongs. So I think something like that will probably be good. You can see there's before, there's after, right? Before, after. We're just darkening that center area up just like so. Next, I'm going to add a little color because I want the city to be more sunset looking. So we're going to add a color balance adjustment layer. We're again going to clip this using our little clippy icon. And I'm going to set my mid-tones to like, I, I want it to be a lot of red in there. So we're going to go plus 40 in the reds and then like negative 25 in the blues, which is going to give us yellow. Uh, and then I'm going to go shadows. Uh, actually, I'm going to start with highlights, I should say. I'll push like a little bit more red into the highlights. I'll push a little green into the highlights and I'll push a little yellow into the highlights, something like so. And then shadows, we're again going to push more red into the shadows and uh, a little bit of magenta into the shadows as well and then some blue as well. So we've got something like that and then we can just reduce the opacity of the color balance adjustment layer as we see fit just to colorize uh, what is otherwise a very gray, drab, dull looking image. I, this is really bugging me over here that this doesn't look more staggered and organic. Let's just go in here to the mask and cut some of these buildings off. Let's just uh, scroll down, grab that mask. We're going to do this quick with the poly lasso tool. I am going to first and foremost get rid of this white building because it's kind of distracting, right? So we'll do that. And then we'll just hook over like this and pick up, whoop, I messed it up. We'll hook over just like that and pick up the edge of this building. Maybe we'll zip all the way up to the top of this. Grab this building here. Let me zoom up here. Hit the delete key. And then we're going to sort of create a fake edge on this building. So we're going to pretend like this building is only that big. Cinch off our selection and just fill this with black. So set black as your foreground color. Option delete, alt backspace, command or control D to deselect. And it's just going to give us, I don't know, just a slightly more natural look. And over here, this almost too is a little bit too blurry. A little bit too blurry. I know we were trying to match the blur on the on the, the front part of the cup, but it's just bugging me a little bit. So we'll just kind of clean that up and we could fade it together a little bit better, but we're not going to. We're gonna leave this just like that. Okay, so the next step is going to be create a new layer and we're gonna call this, oh, I'm, I'm creating it in context of the other clipped layers. Let's select our top layer here and create a new layer. And I'm gonna call this shadow 
inner or something like that. And I'm going to command or control click on our latte selection that we made before. So I told you it was going to be useful. And we're going to paint our shadow on the inside of the cup. So grab your brush tool. Again, you want a really large brush, pretty low opacity. We'll probably bump the opacity to like 40-ish percent. And we're just going to go in and paint a very pronounced shadow along the front edge. Now, depending on how dark you made uh, the rest of like all down in here, it'll just, it'll, you know, affect how much you're going to even see that shadow or not. Now we do have this building that is kind of poking out. I think we should sort of somewhat unnaturally just darken him overall just to help him match and blend in with what we're doing. All right. So something like so. Whoops. What am I doing? I think I'm painting. I'm thinking that I'm painting on a mask, but I'm not. Let's deselect that. I'm just going to use the smaller brush and just go over this just with one pass, just to kind of make it blend something like that, just so it's not sticking out like a sore thumb, no pun intended. Um, and it just, it's doing its thing over there. All right. That's cool. That's looking kind of the way we want it to look. Okay. So now we want to create another new layer and this is going to be our clouds. Now uh, you could use images of clouds. There's some really good brush packs of clouds. That's what we're going to use. Uh, and I'll provide a link. If I can find the brush pack I'm using, I know it's free, uh, but it's this here, Clouds by Mila. And we're just going to use that. So let's grab some clouds here. I'm going to start with the big, the big piece of cloud. And again, set my foreground color to white. Make sure your brush opacity is at 100%. And then just click a few times. In fact, I'm not even going to use my tablet. So I'm going to click to add that bit of clouds there. Let's maybe add some clouds next to it over here. And you're just looking to build out, I don't know, just clouds that you would expect to see over a city. Uh, there is a mushroom cloud in here as well, but we definitely wouldn't want that. So we're going to avoid stuff like that. Uh, but how do I do this here? Maybe we'll throw a cloud there. There's our mushroom cloud. That would be a bad, bad one to put. And uh, let's add some small clouds here. Even clouds that kind of float in front of the buildings, you'll see here in a minute, we're going to mask this. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. I probably won't use any more than one of any given cloud. So just keep right clicking to bring up your brush uh, panel and, uh, you know, put clouds in, put them far and wide. You can make it as wide as you want or contain them to one specific area if that's really what you want to do. I'll put, uh, put a cloud like, ah, I don't know, maybe like that right in there. Again, like I said, we're going to mask this to, uh, to, our, to our building. So you're not going to see this stuff. All right, that's probably enough when it comes to the clouds. Maybe I'll add one more, one, one or two more, something like that up there. And then maybe another one down there. Maybe something like so. It's kind of cool. All right. Now with this, all we need to do is command or control click on our buildings, but you can see here that it's also selecting the bits around the building. So we want to sort of intersect the selection with our layer mask that we've created. Whoops, and I just undid that. So let me go and choose a redo and redo load the selection. Uh, so we want to hold down command shift option and click on the layer mask. Oh, I just did it again. I did it again. Let me redo redo, 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 bring up the selection. What is going on with me today? Uh, making these tutorials out here is wearing me out, I guess. Uh, I'm going to select this layer mask and I'm going to hold down command shift option and click on that layer thumb, the layer mask thumb. Now you can see it cuts away all the bits of the selection we don't want. Now, how are we going to use this? Well, I'm going to select the clouds layer and I don't want to save the clouds that are on top of the building. So I want to hold down alter option, click on the new layer mask icon, and it's going to fill that selection with black in our layer mask, therefore hiding the clouds that would be on top of the buildings. There we have it. Now I'm going to go out to my finder and I have already masked the plane and the hot air balloons we're going to drop into the sky. Uh, you can go, I mean, you can literally use the poly lasso tool just like I did with a little three pixel blur and you'll be totally fine. So let's drag our airplane in. Uh, we'll put it over here. Yeah, I don't care. That's got a different uh, bit rate. Command or control T and we'll just make this guy a little bit smaller. They can be flying out of O'Hare or Midway right there. We want to clip a hue saturation. By the way, we can delete this hue saturation layer up top. Man, yeah, we'll delete the layer. I want to delete the whole layer. What am I thinking? And I will clip a hue saturation layer to this airplane. And the reason I'm doing that is I think I want to change the color scheme a little bit and then just reduce the saturation kind of a lot. The pink is not looking all that great. Let's go with maybe like a lighter blue, something like that. And I could darken or brighten it. Now, I do want to take my airplane. I'm just going to name this layer plane. 
if I can spell plane correctly. I'm going to name the layer plane. I'm going to select the hue saturation and the plane layer. I'm going to drag these beneath the clouds, right? Because I almost want it to look like that plane is interacting with the clouds. And that'll help dictate the positioning a little bit too, by the way, because I don't want too much of the plane to be covered by the clouds, but I do definitely want it to be, you know, in there doing its thing. All right, next, I'm going to go back to my finder. We're going to grab the masked hot air balloons. And again, I selected these the same way, just a, just a slight blurred poly lasso tool. And the reason I'm not being super precise with them, if I'm being honest, is because I know that when we drag them here into our composition, they are going to be very, very small. So they start out being pretty big and then they're going to be tiny. So the clouds, we want these to be here underneath the, the cloud. I'm sorry, the balloons, we want to be underneath the clouds. I think we may end up changing that. Commander Control T to free transform. Let's just scale this down and make these balloons kind of small. And we'll put the balloons out over here. It's kind of cool. And yeah, I don't know, maybe I'm, I might actually want these in front of the clouds. They're, remember, the hot air, hot air balloons don't fly uh, quite as high as airplanes do. Maybe I'll reduce the opacity of the hot air balloons just a little bit, just to kind of make some of those clouds see through a little bit and also tone down the color. You know what, I'll probably clip a hue saturation adjustment to these guys as well. So clip that in there. And we can look at this. And I think all we're going to do is just reduce the saturation a little bit. I hate to do it because it's got all these bright, beautiful colors, but it's just kind of sticking out like a sore thumb. So we uh we want to we want to change that all right what's going on here you know we're going to close the properties panel we'll get back to it later i'm going to double click and say balloons and there's our balloon layer uh next we want to add just a flock of birds because you always see pigeons flying around in the city i thought it'd be a nice touch uh so we're going to open up another unsplash image not the city of chicago we're going to uh, open up these birds so i'll right click and choose open with photoshop and this is going to be kind of quick and easy we're going to select these birds out of the sky here's how we're going to do it we're going to use a channel based selection because they're just silhouette black birds against a pretty light sky so we're going to drag a selection over just the birds and i am going to pop them up onto their own layer command or control j then i'm going to unlock the background layer and i will delete it now what we're going to do is go image trim and we're going to choose to trim based on transparent pixels hit okay it's just going to knock us down to just the birds and now we're going to go window and i'm going to open my channels panel here in the channels we have a bunch of different channels we can probably choose any of them because it's a black and white image drag it down and choose the, to the new channel button and on this blue copy channel you don't want to work on your original channels you'll mess up your image uh or not mess it up but you'll you'll make an artistic expression all over your image uh we're going to go blue copy here and i'm going to say image adjustments levels and what we want to do is make the birds solid black and the sky behind them solid white once we do that we'll have a great perfect selection very quickly and easily hit OK. And we want to inverse this because the white is what gets selected. So command or control I, and there is our selection of the birds. So all I need to do, so click on the RGB uh, composite channel, and then command or control click on the blue copy channel. And I can close my channels panel now. Over here on our layers panel, we have our layer one selected. Simply hit command or control J, and we've popped all the birds up to their own layer. There we have it. We can drag these birds over to our composite, drop them into the sky above the city, and resize. So I'm going to name the layer birds, command or control T, and we're going to just, I don't know, we'll throw them up here. I don't know. They can go wherever. Make them as big or small as you want. I don't want them to look like bats, so I'm going to make them a little bit bigger than that. There we go. Something like that is cool. Okay, so next we're going to create a sun that sits in the sky and shines through the buildings. So we're going to create a new layer here, and I'm going to call this sun. I'm going to grab my brush tool. I'm going to right click. And we're going to go with a, just a big soft edged brush. So maybe the big 500 a pixel bopper. We're actually going to make it more like 1250, I think. And I'm going to click once, twice, something like that. Hit command or control T even and make it bigger. So I'm going to make it like that big. And I'm going to duplicate this command or control J. Shut off the top layer. Select the bottom layer. Hit command or control U to open up hue saturation. Tick on colorize. Reduce the lightness. Boost the saturation and make it like orange, orange, reddish, orange, whatever color you think the sun should be. Turn on the white part of the layer, hit command or control T. We're gonna hold down our alter option key and just make the center of the sun. This is gonna be the real glowing hot spot center of the sun. Make it a little smaller. Select the sun layer now and we're going to give it the screen blend mode. And then the top sun layer, we're going to give it the linear dodge add blend mode, which does nothing until we double click on the layer. Open up the layer style dialog box and shut off transparency shapes layer. So shut that off. And then we're going to reduce the fill opacity just until we get a nice sun burst explosion happening through the city. And then we'll reduce the overall opacity of the screen sun layer as well. So just tweak these until you, you get something that looks kind of like you want it to look. 
So before the sun, after the sun, uh, just going to give us this burst of light and orange color through our uh, through our composite here. And at this point, it's just a matter of doing some color grading and playing with some things. I want to show you a quick color grading trick. So I'm going to add a color lookup table above all this. Let's go color lookup table. And uh, I'm going to load a 3D LUT. There's all these ones that are included with Photoshop. I'm going to go with the Kodak 5218, or um, yeah, Kodak, Kodak 5218 uh, 2395. I think this is the one that I like for this. Yeah, something like that. Eh, you know, I might try another one here. Let's try the Fuji F125 2395. Yeah, that's a little better, a little warmer. I'm going to close this panel. And uh, I like what this is doing to everything, except it's we're kind of losing our clouds. It's blowing out some of the highlights. So we can double click on the color lookup table again to open color, uh, the layer style dialog box. And we can blend this. So blend it with the underlying layer, unless the underlying layer is super bright. So we're going to take the white handle, of the underlying layer, hold down alter option, split the handle by just clicking on the handle and drag back the split until we see our clouds coming back for us. So just drag it back. Well, my, I didn't split my handle well there. Uh, something like that. And just adjust the handles to see what you're getting out there in your image. So there's before I did blend if, there's after. So you can see we're bringing all of our highlights, the really intense highlights. We're bringing all that stuff right back. So we get that color change, but only through like the really dark and mid tony areas of our little composite composition, whatever you want to call it. And uh, last but not least, because every good image needs a layer of finishing grain, go grain. Go edit fill. Choose to fill this with, you got it, 50% gray. And then the hotkey command shift A, that's control shift A on the PC, is going to pop you out to the camera raw editor where we go to the FX tab, throw a bunch of grain in there. It does, just needs to be a lot and, uh, you know, give it some decent size. Hit OK. And we're going to set this grain layer to the blend mode of soft light. Zoom in to see what we've got. And if it's too grainy, reduce the opacity of the grain layer. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We've created the city in a cup composite, I guess really more of a composition. And the cool thing about this, of course, is you can do it with any city that you darn well please. Here we've done it with Chicago today. Well, that's it for this one, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, two things. Make sure you subscribe and turn those notifications on. Also, if you did create this artwork, upload it to your Instagram. Tag me in it. I would love to see it. And I'll show you a little bit of love. That would be a super duper cool. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, well, check out this other tutorial that's playing on the screen right now. It's all about creating this walking into focus across a bridge photo manipulation effect. It's a really cool uh, little thing. There's a link on the screen right now. You can click to check it out. And just a reminder that I love all the people, but I especially love people like you who stay and watch this video all the way till the end. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.